Greetings, guide bushing gurus and greenhorns. I'm Scott with Gen Swiss, technical supervisor here. Hi, I'm Bill Fletcher. I'm the Northeast Regional Sales Manager with Gen Swiss. And today, we're going to talk about thread whirling. Thread whirling is one of my favorite processes for running in a CNC Swiss machine. Part of the reason for that is it's, it's an exclusive process. Uh, it requires the sliding headstock action that Swiss machines provide. You need to have a guide bushing to provide support. And the guide bushing is also one of the main reasons for doing thread whirling in the first place. Um, reason for that being, thread whirling is great for complex thread forms. Anything where there's a lot of material removal, a uh, good example that everybody knows is bone screw. Uh, medical screws require a lot of material removal between the major and the minor diameter. There's a lot of radii in there. There's sometimes there's crest flat callouts, crest radiuses, things like that. It's tough to make that kind of form using a single point tool without falling out of the guide bushing or segmenting the workpiece. So the great thing about thread whirling is it lets you start from stock diameter to go to finished threads in a single pass. It's a really unique process. It's sort of like an inside-out saw. You're sharing a work with a whole series of teeth, six, nine, or 12 units. Um, and each one of the unique shapes is taking a very small bite per pass, as you would say, reducing stress and uh, actually creating a very fast, full, accurate form and really incredible surface finishes. Oh yeah, the, the surface finish is, the, is one of the main driving factors of using thread whirling. And uh, the surface finish only improves when you use more teeth. So uh, going back uh, about uh, to around 2006 or 2007 or so, uh, in partnership with Gen Swiss and our, and our uh, Swiss partner Utilities out of Switzerland, uh, we've developed a thread whirling system that uses nine or 12 pockets uh, in the cutter ring. Uh, and then the benefit there is, as you already stated, uh, better surface finishes and faster metal removal. And the inserts are unique, and as per the uh, blueprint or drawing supplied to us, we're going to make a shape or a form for each of the individual inserts to the exact specifications of the thread required. And what's nice is there are match sets. If I understand correctly, every one of these inserts that are delivered are absolute dead matches to each other. So you don't have to worry about differentiation of thread development because of inconsistent inserts. Yes, uh, on the, uh, the packages that are delivered, when you look at uh, each individual edge, they're marked. So you would use them as edge one and edge two. Okay, there's uh, a designation specifically on each there is. individual insert, correct? Yep. Yep, and if you run them in that match set, you're going to get the best edge to edge to edge repeatability, uh, which also translates into better surface finishes and better tool life. Uh, better surface finishes because you don't have one edge taking a little bit more of a bite than the rest, and better repeatability because, again, you don't have that one insert that's doing a little more work uh, that would end up chipping out sooner than the rest. So you get very even wear on the inserts, and you get very uh, good, reliable tool life that way. And, the, and thread whirling it can be done by a couple of different things. Number one is uh, high volume work. You have a lot of screws to develop or lots of threading to do and it's one form. Well, this is a very fast, very accurate, highest quality possible way of developing threads. It's also a great technique for people who have to do lots of smaller batches of uh, thread development in that now once you've gone into thread whirling all you need to do is change the inserts or possibly a ring and you can then move on very quickly and easily to another specification. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, some applications examples are uh, you could use them for traditional hardware store style threads like 60 degree included UNs. Uh, but where it really shines is where you've got custom profiles. Again, going back to that bone screw profile. Uh, it, uh, it, it really shines in a situation like that. Um, the capabilities of Utilities and Gen Swiss were able to produce uh, thread pitches up to roughly around eight millimeters, believe it or not, under the right circumstance. So we've got blanks that'll fit into our pockets that are in four, six, and eight millimeters wide. Uh, this also uh, gives us better capability to do double, triple, and we've even done some quad lead wow. thread whirling before. Uh, and obviously you need a wider blank to accommodate more thread profiles. We put every thread profile, so if it's a quad start or a, th or a triple start, or the more popular double start, there'll be two profiles on the uh, cutting insert. And this is very popular. You're going to see a lot of this in uh, medical bone screw development, correct? Bone screws, there's some aerospace work that can be done with it. You could do high volume UN unified threads, UNCs, UNFs. 
Uh, I believe you can even do UNJs with the root radii that's, that's on there. Um, it, uh, there's not a whole lot that's restrictive. The range that it works in, uh, we can do generally about a millimeter and a half. I think the smallest we've done is maybe one millimeter uh, in the major diameter. Um, obviously, you need to have work holding to compensate for some of that. Uh, where you'd have an extended nose guide bushing. But another benefit is some of the rings that we offer are also shifted forward. So having a shifted forward ring gets you closer to the guide bushing as well, allowing you to do those smaller diameters. Another thing to keep in mind is when you shift the center line of the forms forward of the live tool pivot, you want to realign the center line with the axis of the workpiece. Uh, and you can do that with a simple trig function. And that makes sense because you're going to move that flight circle with all of those thread whirling inserts in there closer to the workpiece, so therefore you got to just change the math. You can start with a larger diameter stock, but machine it down to your finished thread uh, and using the shifted ring paired with a shifted guide bushing, you can meet in the middle and have a good rigid setup. Um, so that would work on the smaller end of the range, and we can go up to potentially about 15 millimeters on the major diameter, and in rare cases, up to about 25. Wow, that's huge. That's driven by the machine and the live tooling that's available for it. Uh, most popular is maxing out around 12 millimeters max on the major diameter. What I've always been very impressed with is that when you get a set of inserts from utilities, you're not flying solo or having to figure out the, the technical support supplied uh, by GenSwiss here locally as well as utilities is pretty extraordinary. When each individual set of inserts is delivered, you get a menu slash guide book that comes with it that's fully illustrated so you'll be able to have the proper feeds, speeds, angles, fully illustrated directions supplied with each set of inserts. And this isn't just based on a whim. This is based on a long-term experience in thread whirling. And we know the feeds and speeds are going to be specific to that thread, that application. And there's a lot of history going behind it. So we're going to be extremely confident Absolutely. in what you're doing. Yep, yep. Uh, some of the, the variables that it gives you on that is things like your C-axis RPM, uh, so how fast you're rotating the bar, what lead angle you have to adjust the live tool to, uh, how fast you run the live tool. It gives you the chip load per tooth. And in some cases, there may even have to be height corrections where you would move your y, your y axis in a slight direction to recenter the forms. That's very hypercritical on inserts where you've got two forms. Uh, oftentimes, you'd, you'd have some kind of a Y correction. And even that is provided on the setup. Uh, so anybody new who's tackling this new and exclusive process, this exclusive process, uh, doesn't have to fly blind. They're they're not left alone. Yeah, that critical matchup of stock rotation versus the speed of the thread whirler and the angle is what. That's where all the magic is. That's it. Okay. Yep. Well, thanks, Bill. Thanks, Scott. I think that's a heck of a program.